tensions have escalated in the contested waters of the South China Sea between Beijing and Manila yet again. In mid-April, the Philippines Coast Guard of the PCG had deployed a ship in the Sabina Shoal. It accused China of building an artificial island there. Videos released by PCG from the Sabina Shoal claims to show piles of crushed coral dumped on the sandbars of the shoal, altering their sizes and even elevation. Every year, hundreds of people get stranded in deserts without having food to eat or drop of water to drink. In fact, according to the IOM report, only in the Sahara, more than 8,000 people died in 2023 in their desperate attempt to cross the desert. It's a harsh reality that deserts are not meant for life. They are dry, dead, and inhospitable. However, China has once again defied all odds. They have created a sea in the heart of the desert, not only to provide a solution to this problem, but also to raise seafood with an extraordinarily high yield. This miraculous feat has surprised the world as no one ever thought it was possible. But what is the hidden agenda behind this project? Is China just being a good Samaritan or is there more to it? Well, keep watching to find out every detail about this unbelievable accomplishment and the mysteries that surround it. So why is China creating a sea in the desert? Well, if we look at China today, it's hard to believe that only 30 years ago, most of the country was covered in arid deserts. There was nothing but sunshine, wind, and sand, as far as the eye could see. However, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention, and China has truly taken this saying to heart. The Chinese government has realized that the key to their economic growth lies in utilizing every inch of their land, even if it means turning deserts into seas. So, they initiated and executed plans to turn these barren lands into productive agricultural fields by using the world's first desert terraforming technology. Not only are they creating a sea in the desert, but they are also raising seafood in it with astonishingly high yields. Even in the past, China has pulled off seemingly impossible feats, like covering the longest desert highway in Xinjiang with green forests and building the world's longest road across a shifting sand desert in the Tarim Desert. And now, the world's first desert aquaculture project is well underway. According to the South China Morning Post, the Xinjiang Autonomous Region has achieved significant technological advancements in both freshwater and saltwater aquaculture, including tiger shrimp, freshwater fish, lobster, and abalone. This is not only a testament to China's ambitious plans, but also to its innovative technology and determination. Aquaculture firm Xinjiang, Shi Xian, which was founded in 2022, recently announced that it has succeeded in a pilot project to develop technology to simulate seawater in a fishing ground located at the periphery of the desert. The project's leader, Mr. Chen Jin, said that the natural salt water in southern Xinjiang had salinity close to the level of seawater, which is a perfect natural advantage for raising seafood. According to a China Business Herald article published by the China Association of Science and Technology, this ambitious project facilitates artificial seafood farming with the company's goal of increasing access to seafood resources in inland areas. Mr. Chen said they have adjusted the level of probiotics and other micronutrients in the water to simulate different seawater environments, essential for each seafood species. This information was released in mid-August, but has only recently been made public due to concerns about seafood safety following the water discharge incident from the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan. To ensure food security, China has banned all imports of Japanese seafood in response to the nuclear plant's waste release caused by an earthquake and tsunami 12 years ago. The company has around six indoor ponds with greenhouses used to maintain different temperature levels in Xinjiang. The company has successfully developed eight different types of seafood, which are grown indoors and then transferred to outdoor ponds. Chinese media have cited this expansion of seafood production in Xinjiang as a prime example of China's push to modernize agriculture and ensure food security. Guo Junu, a manager at Xinjiang Benting Biotechnology Company, said that they were able to sell each kilogram of black tiger shrimp for 200 yuan. So now you know why China is so focused on aquaculture in the desert, not only to provide a sustainable source of food for its citizens, but also to stimulate economic growth and improve the lives of people living in these areas. According to the UN, China is the largest seafood producer and accounts for approximately 18% of the world's total seafood catch. 
Beijing has identified the importance of food security and aims to become more self-reliant in agricultural production, especially in the face of global food market instability. Due to various external factors like climate change, geopolitical tensions, and war, Xinjiang's role in China's aquaculture industry. Xinjiang is one of seven locations in China, chosen as a pilot area to produce salt alkaline tolerant rice, also known as seawater rice, to boost crop yields. However, the extremely dry environment also presents significant challenges to sustainable agricultural development due to water scarcity. In the past, fish farms in Xinjiang mainly produced freshwater seafood by utilizing water supply from high altitude lakes, where water is sourced from snowmelt or pumped up from underground. But now, with the help of China's world's first desert terraforming technology, Xinjiang is becoming a major player in China's aquaculture industry. Now the authorities of Xinjiang are focusing on increasing the annual seafood output to about 30,000 tons by 2025. And China as a whole plans to increase its seafood production to 69 million tons in the same year, as reported by Xinhua News Agency. This push for aquaculture in the desert helps people to earn a good income and also promotes economic growth in the region. But how does Xinjiang achieve this feat? Well, the answer lies in Lake Boston. This freshwater lake is the largest inland lake in China, and from August to October, it enters its busiest fishing season. Since 2018, the water circulation efficiency and quality of Lake Boston have improved significantly, with a total of 87 million cubic meters of water flowing in from the Kaidu River. The vast reed beds that cover more than 40,000 hectares around the lake provide a natural filtration system and habitat for various species of birds and aquatic life. In fact, 198 different species of birds have been observed in the lake which highlights its thriving ecosystem. This has made Lake Boston the largest fish production base in Xinjiang, producing over four tons of seafood annually, including freshwater shrimp, grass carp, and crabs. The success of this lake has inspired many entrepreneurs like Yuan Janu, who said that after releasing around 36 million crab seeds last year, they are now ready to harvest and even plan to expand their operations by introducing Australian freshwater lobsters so that more people can enjoy Xinjiang's seafood products. In 2022, the total seafood output from Xinjiang reached a staggering 173 tons, making it the second largest producer in Northwest China. So, is China the only country turning deserts into seas? Well, no, the idea of creating a sea in the middle of a desert has been around for quite some time. In fact, many countries have attempted similar projects with varying degrees of success, but China's achievements in this field are undoubtedly the most impressive. The first known attempt to create an inland sea in a desert was made by Scottish engineer Donald Mackenzie in 1957. He suggested that the LJ Basin in the Sahara Desert could be turned into a sea by building a 644 kilometers long canal from Morocco to the basin. This inland sea is estimated to cover an area of 96,560 square kilometers, almost the size of Ireland. Similarly, in the 1870s, a French army captain, Francois Elie Ruder, proposed building a 193 kilometers long canal to connect the Mediterranean Sea with the Chot El Fejaj Salt Lake area in the Sahara Desert. It was estimated that this project would inundate 4,828 square kilometers of sandy land. While these plans never came to fruition due to technical and financial challenges, they laid the foundation for further exploration of similar ideas. In 2018, a Silicon Valley company called Y Combinator proposed a plan to flood the Algodones Desert in California with millions of small water reservoirs in an effort to combat global warming. The idea was to use these reservoirs to grow algae, which act as carbon sinks. However, the cost of this project, estimated to be around 50 trillion USD, has prevented it from being implemented so far. The threat of desertification is a significant global issue, and the international community has recognized it as such for many years. According to a United Nations report, by 2030, the fashion industry alone is expected to consume an additional 35% of land area to produce raw materials for low-cost fashion production. Also, the amount of food wasted or lost every year 
is equivalent to the output from 1.4 billion hectares of farmland. With such staggering figures, it's clear that the world is facing an urgent challenge in combating desertification and land degradation. Every year, an estimated 12 million hectares of fertile land are lost due to various factors like deforestation, drought, overcultivation, and the impacts of climate change. However, China's success in Xinjiang serves as a shining example of how technology and innovative ideas can be harnessed to bring about positive changes in the face of these challenges. They're not just turning deserts into seas or raising seafood production, they're also creating employment opportunities and promoting sustainable economic growth in the region. So what do you think about China's efforts to turn deserts into seas? Will it inspire other countries to follow suit? Well, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if this video has piqued your interest, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content like this.